Let us all rejoice in the Lord as we honour St. Bridget, at whose feast the angels rejoice and praise the Son of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Today we keep the feast of St. Bridget of Sweden, who was a religious, and she's one of the co-patronesses of Europe. Uh, Bridget lived in the 14th century. She was married at quite a young age and had eight children uh, with a husband, but then they decided to live a more ascetical life and actually lived in religious houses. He died and she went on to form the Bridgetine Order, having been a member of the Third Order of St. Francis. She had many mystical experiences, including of Christ going through his passion. She led a penitential pilgrimage to Rome and tried to help bring about uh, peace in the church, which at that time was quite divided. And so we pray in thanksgiving for this great saint, for all religious and for all women, whether married or uh, dedicated to religious life. We pray for a renewal of religious life in our time and for more vocations to the religious life and the consecrated life. The Mass this morning is offered for Catherine and Sylvester King. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who guided St. Bridget of Sweden along different paths of life, and wondrously, wondrously taught her the wisdom of the cross, as she contemplated the passion of your Son, Grant us, we pray, that walking worthily in our vocation, we may seek you in all things. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord was addressed to me, saying, Go and shout this in the hearing of Jerusalem. The Lord says this, I remember the affection of your youth, the love of your bridal days. You followed me through the wilderness, through a land unsown. Israel was sacred to the Lord, the first fruit of his harvest. Anyone who ate of this had to pay for it. Misfortune came to them. It is the Lord who speaks. I brought you to a fertile country to enjoy its produce and good things. But no sooner had you entered than you defiled my land and made my heritage detestable. The priests have never asked, where is the Lord? Those who administer the law have no knowledge of me. The shepherds have rebelled against me. The prophets have prophesied in the name of Baal, following things with no power in them. You heavens stand aghast at this, stand stupefied, stand utterly appalled. It is the Lord who speaks. Since my people have committed a double crime, they have abandoned me, the fountain of living water, only to dig cisterns for themselves, leaky cisterns that hold no water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In you, Lord, is the source of life. Your love, Lord, reaches to heaven, your truth to the skies. Your justice is like God's mountain, your judgments like the deep. In you, Lord, is the source of life. O Lord, how precious is your love. My God, the sons of men, find refuge in the shelter of your wings. They feast on the riches of your house. They drink from the stream of your delight. In you, Lord, is the source of life. In you is the source of life, and in your light we see light. Keep on loving those who know you, doing justice for upright hearts. In you, Lord, is the source of life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Harden not your hearts today, but listen to the voice of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples went up to Jesus and asked, Why do you talk to the crowds in parables? Because, he replied, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven are revealed to you, but they are not revealed to them. For anyone who has will be given more, and he will have more than enough. But from anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. The reason I talk to them in parables is that they look without seeing and listen without hearing or understanding. So in their case, this prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled. You will listen and listen again, but not understand. See and see again, but not perceive. For the heart of this nation has grown coarse, their ears are full of hearing, and dull of hearing, and they have shut their eyes. For fear they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and be converted and be healed by me. But happy are your eyes because they see, your ears because they hear. I tell you solemnly, many prophets and holy men long to see what you see, and never saw it, to hear what you hear, and never heard it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is strange when Jesus says that the people are, they see without, um, you know, understanding. They listen without hearing. There is a dullness there, but almost a will not to understand, not to penetrate what, into what Jesus is saying. The heart of this nation has grown coarse, for fear they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and be converted and be healed by me. A fear of being healed, a fear of being converted. And that, I think, is because the devil puts into our hearts, our minds, this notion that if we are converted to God, then we won't be free to do what we want anymore. We'll lose our independence. We'll lose our, our own ability to decide, this is what I want to do. And we'll have to do what God wants. And we'll be sort of dragged by the nose here and there and 
we won't be independent. Well, of course we won't be independent, but really we can't be truly independent from God anyway. It's, it, it's, it's a lie. We're either um, led by the devil, who in fact ensnares us and en en enslaves us with sin, or actually set free to be what we were created to be, which is the children of God. That's where we actually try and find true freedom. And there is a sense at first that we're losing this imaginary independence of being able to do exactly what we want. But what we actually realise is that we're being liberated from a, a certain kind of slavery to our own wills. Only when we follow God's will do we realise what true liberty and freedom actually is. And as Jesus says, you know, we are happy because we see what others in the past in the Old Testament long to see and never saw it to hear those words and never hear them. Bridges of Sweden in a very special way got to see and hear things about Christ's passion which gave her, gave her a real insight into the love of God, the love that he has for us and all that he's poured out for us and therefore the blessings that are waiting for us when we open our hearts to this great source of richness. And so we should give up our rebellion and rather open our hearts to follow God's way, to know true freedom, to be set free to be the children of God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for all. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, and the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings presented in commemoration of St. Mary Magdalene, whose homage of charity was graciously accepted by your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ, for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope and Paul our Bishop, and all those who hold him to the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O oh God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty, from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. It was also your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant shall share and, and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, 
Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit as we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Your love is for justice, your hatred for evil. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above kings.
sacrament most holy, and a sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, O praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, O praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we who are fortified by the power of this sacrament may learn through the example of St. Bridget to seek you always above all things and to bear in this world the likeness of the new man. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go on and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.